All right, we're going to look at page 55 through 60 in your guided workbook. Um, so the first thing I would like for you to do is read over the example that's given to you on page 55 that's talking about um, minutes for cell phone calls and different things like that. I'd like you to read that over carefully and then we're going to just go to example two and talk about the answers for examples two and three. So um, they talk about the water of weight is proportional to the volume at a rate of eight pounds per gallon. So that means that if I have water in a bucket that every gallon of water that I have equals eight pounds of weight. So the weight is equal to eight pounds times the volume. Um, so then what if I were to put a rock in the bottom of my bucket and my bucket started off weighing 10 pounds? So that means it started off with 10 pounds plus every um, gallon of water that I add is going to be another 8 pounds. So I'm adding 10 to my formula. So what happens is I have this chart. So what if the gallons was 0? then that means my weight here would be zero, but my weight here would be 10 pounds because I still have that rock in the bottom. And then if I put in half a gallon, if I substitute that into eight times 0.5, I get four. And if I do eight times 0.5 plus 10, I get 14. And I can keep doing that. For one gallon, it would be eight and 18 for the other bucket, 1.5 would be 12 gallons, I mean uh, 12 pounds and 22 for the other bucket, and I can do that for each of these values. So the next example says, plot these points on a graph. So what we have here is we drew a graph, and these are our gallons across the bottom, and these are our pounds. So the pounds are what we call the dependent variable because it depends on how many gallons I put in the bucket as to what the pounds are going to be. So that's my dependent variable. So I'm going to graph each of those values. So 0, 0, and then 0 0.5, 4, this is about 4, um, 1 would be 8, uh, 1.5 would be about 12, so a little bit more than 10, 2 would be 16 and 2.5 would be 20. And then I'm going to graph the other points. So at 0 it would be 10, at 0.5 it's 14, at 1 it's 18, at 1.5 it's 22, at 2 it's 26, and at 2.5 it is 30. So both of these graphs look linear and if you'll notice they also look parallel to each other. So parallel means they don't touch. So these two lines look linear. They look parallel to each other. There is a constant change from this point to this point, from this point to this point. And so what they're talking about here is what is the constant rate of eight pounds in this graph? Um, how does it show up in the graph? And it says for every eight pounds, um, Per one gallon, that means for every eight pounds we go up one more gallon, or better yet, for every one gallon added, we go up, we increase our weight by eight pounds. So it'd be better to state it this way because of our dependent variable. The amount of gallons depends on, on the, the weight, or the weight depends on the gallons. So this is what our graph looks like. So this eight pounds is what we call our slope. It's our rate of change. The rate of change is eight um, pounds per gallon. So that would be written 8 over 1. Okay, so that's what we refer to as the rate of change. Um, that's the rise over the run. So that means that I went up 8 over 1 for every um, 
for every one gallon. So here, from to go from one gallon one to gallon two, I went up. From this point, I went up eight and over one to get to the next point. Okay, so let me give you another example of that. So at one, we were at one eighteen, and at two, we were at two twenty six. So what is the change from 18 to 26? So 26 minus 18 equals 8. So the rate of change is 8. That's how much it's increasing. Okay, so here's another example. We're buying a concert ticket. So, or a fair ticket, I'm sorry. The cost is proportional to the number of tickets that you buy at the fair at a rate of $2 per ticket. So for every ticket I buy, I have to pay I have to pay two dollars so the cost is equal to two times t now what if i have to pay fifteen dollars maybe parking fee or whatever to get into the fair so i have fifteen dollars as a flat rate plus i still have to pay the two dollars for every ticket okay so it's just a different kind of example but the same type of thing so our first example here is two times the tickets and the other one is two times the tickets plus the fifteen dollars so here are our different values again if i substitute those in and then i'm going to graph those again so across the bottom are how many tickets i bought and across the side are the cost so the cost depends on the number of tickets so again zero zero and then i have at ten it went up to twenty at 20 it went up to 40 um, or if I look at the other one at 0 it was at 15 at 10 it was at 35 and I can keep doing that so again at um, 10 I was at 25 and I'm just looking at one of the, I'm sorry at 10 I was at 20 and at 20 I was at 40 so how much what is the change between those two okay it's a rate of change of 20 but the difference here is that my y value my x values are also changing so 20 divided by 2 uh, sorry 20 divided by 10 is 2 so what does the 2 come out to be in this one 2 is the rate of change so for every one ticket that you buy, the cost increases by $2. So in this case, the rise is going to be $2. And the run is one ticket. Okay. All right, let's look at another example. So this one's talking about distance driving. So when you're driving on the road and it tells you it's a 40 mile per hour speed limit, so this can tell you in a certain period of time how many miles did you drive. So if it's 40 times the time, I'm going to find out the distance that I drove. So let's assume I only drew, drove 100 miles. How much farther will I drive each hour? So this is what we're talking about with these. Same idea as what we did before. So that means in zero hours I had gone zero miles. But in this example I had already gone 100 miles. So in one hour I went 40 miles. In two hours I went 80 miles. Three hours I went 120. Again, I can graph those on my graph. So I have my hours across the bottom. I have my um, miles. I forgot to label that on the y-axis so 0 0 140 280 3 120 now my my line's not very straight but that's just because I'm freehanding my graph so these points usually will touch each other so again in this case I have the point 140 and 280 so the difference between those two, 80 minus 40, is 40. That's where I get that 40 miles per hour, that rate of change. Okay, so one more time they're asking you, so how does that constant 40 miles per hour show up in the graph? 
And again, it's saying that for every one hour of time that you travel, you will travel a total of 40 miles. So I hope this helps.